this video, I'm going to go over three websites that will help you level up your web development skills, in particular CSS, JavaScript, and your backend. So make sure that you watch this whole video. And before we get started, make sure to like this video, subscribe so don't miss upcoming lessons or any tutorials. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to see more videos like this. But now, let's get started. The first website I'm going to go over is going to be CSS Battle, which is going to help you improve your CSS by completing a lot of different challenges. So here are some of the challenges. If you scroll down and actually press on the old battles, you're going to see the insane amount of challenges or battles that they have in here. And at the very top, there's actually a leaderboard with people who do this every single day. And we can see that they all have 202 targets, which means that they've done a bunch of different challenges, but they all have a different score. And the score is increased by writing as little code as possible in these challenges. So let's go ahead and actually press on today's challenge over here. We're going to get a message here. I'm just going to press on got it. Let's go. And this is what it's going to look like. So on the left, we're going to have an editor. And on the right, we're going to have the target that we're going to have to recreate and then our code output. There's two options here, so slide and compare, so you can compare your code to the target, and then there's this diff, which is going to be the difference. And the really nice thing about these challenges here is that there's a lot of different ways to solve them, and you have to find the way that's going to use as little code as possible, so some people might say that you're going to have to use two rectangles, so one that would go like this, and then the other that would go down like that, and then you will need to have four rectangles, so two here, and then two here, and then another way to solve that is by having a square like this and then another square here and then we would have a rectangle with the same background color that would go like that that would most likely use less code but it really depends on how you write the code and stuff like that so i'm going to go ahead and try and solve it if you're not interested in seeing that you can go ahead and skip to the next section but let's go ahead and do that so we have colors in here let's go ahead and start with the background color so select the body here and we're going to set the background color to be this purple and then we're going to have the light purple for the divs. Now since we're going to have two different divs like that, I'm going to set the position here to be absolute and then I'm going to create another div and they're going to have different classes. So class, this guy's going to have a class of top, this one is going to be bottom and then here I'm going to select the top and Let's set the position top to be one REM to see what that looks like. And let's also select the bottom, which I'm going to set the background to be transparent just for now so that we only see this div right here. Let's try two REMs. I'm going to use diff just to try to make this more accurate. So three and we can see that there's still a little bit of space here. So let's do 3.1 and we can see that that's going to be perfect. So if top is 3.1, left is also going to be 3.1 REM. So there it is. Now it's going to look a lot better. Now for the bottom, I'm going to move the background and let's start by setting the right to be 3.1 REM. And then we're going to set the bottom to be 3.1 REM. And there it is. So here's going to be our two squares. And now we're going to have to create one rectangle that would go in here. So let's create another one, which is going to be under both of them. Copy this. I'm going to paste it. And this guy is going to be, I'm just going to call this BG. So let's go under here. Dot BG. And we're going to start by setting the background color to be black just so that we can see it. Let's set the width to be, I'm going to guess somewhere around 250 pixels maybe. And the height should stay the same. Let's also set the top to be 4 REM. I'm going to use diff right here. And I'm just going to play with the REMs here. So 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be 6.1, 2, 3. So that's going to be too much. So 0.25 is going to work. Now we're going to use the left and we're going to set this to two REMs and it's going to be somewhere around four. So there it is. And now we can see that it's going to be way too large. So instead of 250, let's do 200. And then we're going to move this to be five, six, let's see, one, two, three, four. So it's 2.5. And now we can see that there's not going to be any more spaces, so we can change this to be the actual background color. And now if we remove the diff, it's going to look the exact same. And so now we can see that if we go to diff, it's going to be covering all of the elements and we're not going to see any color, which means that it should work. And if we press on submit, we should hopefully get 100. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, you're supposed to remove this right here. So I'm going to move that. But... I scored 600 and it's going to be 100% match so we got this right and let's try press on submit again and we should get a higher score because I removed all the comments so there it is 607 and I could make this code a lot shorter but I'm not going to do that so hopefully you get the point of how to solve these challenges and you can also challenge other people which is also a really nice cool feature.
The next website is called AdventureS, which is going to help you level up your JavaScript. They do have a few challenges over here. So 25, and I did already do the first one, so I'm just going to do it again. And here we have a function with gifts, and we have to return something. This is going to be the instructions. And before I do this challenge, the really nice thing is that they have these results over here. So if I submit, we can see the results, every single test. There's an expected and the actual result with the actual test so all the challenges have their own cool little story and here's going to be what your function is expected to do so let's go ahead and read this out in the toy factory of the north pole each toy has a unique identification number however due to an error in the toy machine some numbers have been assigned to more than one toy find the first identification number that has been repeated where the second occurrence has the smallest index. In other words, if there is more than one repeated number, you must return the number whose second occurrence appears first in the list. If there are no repeated numbers, return negative one. And here's going to be a few examples. So we have this array with a few numbers, 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 2. And the number that they want us to get is going to be 3. And it's not going to be 2 because if we take a look at the indexes, the index of this would be 2, this would be 3 and 4. So they only have one index difference whereas these two have an index difference of one two three and four so they want us to get three as we can see over here and if for example in this case we're not going to have any they want us to return a negative one so the first thing that we're going to do is i'm going to create an array which is going to be called scene and i'm going to go over how this works in just a second we're going to create a for loop i'm going to say let i equal to zero while i is smaller or equal to gifts.length and we're going to add one to i every single time we run this loop and here we're going to have a new statement that's going to check if seen with the gifts of i if that's true then we're going to return so we can just go ahead and write return gifts with the i in here else we're just going to set scene with gifts of i to be true and then if not going to get any returns from here then we're going to return a negative one and if we submit the solution it's going to run some tests and a hundred percent in here and so the way that this works is we have this scene which is going to be a set a set is going to be an object that lets you store unique values of any types and if you want a separate video on that then let me know but this object allows us to check if the current item in this for loop has already been seen and if it doesn't then it's going to add it in the array and the for loop is going to be for each gift so if the value was found in scene then we're going to return the actual value but then if not then we're going to return a negative one which means that there is no repeated value so hopefully that makes more sense but if we take a look at another challenge so let's go to a medium the first thing that we're going to see is it already looks a lot harder but that's the best part of it so if you want to level up your JavaScript, then I really recommend you try this website and do as many challenges as you want, or even do it on the daily until you reach the last challenge. And the last website is called Code Crafters, and for those of you who want to work on actual projects with JavaScript, whether it be backend or fronted, by recreating popular software like Redis, Git, or SQLite. And you do need a subscription, but you can still do free challenges without having one. And if you do want to try one, you can also do the free trial. And after that, you can go down in the details below to get a 40% off the subscription if you choose to buy one. Here's going to be the challenges. It's not only going to show you how to recreate popular software, but how to actually build your own stuff. So build your own HTTP server, build your own shell, which is pretty interesting. And a few other ones, but I'm going to go over grep because this is the first one that I did and I really like this one. And for those of you who don't know, grep is going to be regular expressions or regex for short. Our patterns used to match characters, combination and strings. And in this challenge, you're going to be building it. So let's go and press on start building. And I'm going to go over the process of how all of this works. So I'm going to go and choose JavaScript. There's different other languages that you can choose. I'm going to just say that we're intermediate. And then we'll just say that we practice JavaScript a few times a week. And I'll pass for that part. Here we're going to load a GitHub repository. And you'll see why we have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and open terminal. I'm going to clone the GitHub repository. I'm going to CD to that GitHub repository. So there it is. And now we're going to push an empty commit. So let's go ahead and do that. Get commit. And then we're going to push origin master. So there it is. Now I'm going to open this with VS Code once it's done. So I'm going to wait for that code period. And now we can see that it actually listened to the commit. So 
we're going to go to the next stage. Here it's going to give you what you're going to have to do. So here it's going to say navigate to app main.js. So app main.js. Here's going to be our JavaScript file. Let's just go here. We did that. And here it's telling us to uncomment this if statement. So let's go ahead and do that. So mark is complete. And now we're going to add all the changes to the GitHub repository. And then we're going to commit them. So git add. And then we're going to commit this. And then we're also going to push this. And now it's going to start running the tests and it's going to, and once it's done, we're going to get test passed. So now we can press on mark stage as complete. We're going to go to the next stage where all of the programming actually happens. So here we have to read the instructions. It's going to tell us some stuff. And then here's telling us to go to our editor. And then once we're done, we can go and do the exact same thing here. And so in this stage, we'll implement support for the character classes. And if we press on this, we can see that the character classes allow us to do very interesting things. And so the way that this works is we have this regex coordinates and then we have this sentence right here. And so we're getting the sentence and we're matching this regex coordinates. And what it's going to do is it's going to output an array with values depending on the coordinates that we're going to put in here. So every single character means something. And out of all of the sentence, it's going to output a letter and then also a number after it and we're looking for this d right here so it's going to tell us what we're going to be looking for so this is going to be for digit character class escape which matches any digits equivalent to numbers 0 to 9 for example so this right here would match 2 in b2 so if we also go to the code examples here take a look at the code what they've done is they have checked if the pattern equals to this and if it does then we're going to use a function called test and let's actually just try to do that. So if we go up in here and we write else if, let's fix all of that, but else if pattern equals to these two reverse slashes and then D, then we're going to return this character right here, dot test with the input line. And if we actually take a look here, it's going to be a method that's going to return true or false depending on what we're going to be getting here. So let's go ahead and add this. So get add everything and then I'm just gonna commit this and push to see if all of that worked so running tests and we're gonna get test passed and I did do the next challenge but obviously nobody wants to see 10 minutes of that so I went ahead and sped it up but if you are interested to see a video on how a certain software was created then let me know down in the comments below but before you click off if you're interested in trying other challenges you're free to go in the details below and actually get a 40 percent off your subscription after your free trial which is going to save you a lot of money and also help you support my channel and one more thing if you want me to make videos on how those popular softwares were created without you having to create them but just watch and listen and absorb all that information then leave a comment down below but this is where we're going to end this video so i really hope that you enjoyed it and if you did then make sure to leave a like subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos or lessons and hopefully see you in the next video